Hi, welcome to Lisa's Bible Study again. We're talking in the book of Romans because it's the book of righteousness. And I want us to understand that we have a sin problem in this country. Uh, we, it has never been quite as bad. I'm sure in the past many, many people would think it was worse. Uh, the Roaring Twenties certainly had a bad time of it. Uh, but today is like sin is just abounding. And every time we turn around, uh, we have less Christians in this country today than we've ever had. And so somebody's fallen behind on their job. I've got to say that. But the reason I want to talk today is because with our sin problem, we have to identify where the problem is in order to deal with it. You know, I was a born-again Christian. I was even a spirit-filled Christian. And I still sinned. And I still did things that I knew were displeasing to my father. And I found myself wanting to do better, but find myself doing worse at times. And it became very frustrating. And sometimes when we do that, we fall back on legalism. We become legalistic under the law because we think that's going to keep us on the right track. But that's not what God wants you. God wants you under grace. And so to understand where your problem lies and how you're going to deal with it, we have to go to Romans because Paul points this out really wonderfully. Um, start with chapter 6 and look at verse 6. Now I'm going to read a lot of scripture here, so I just want y'all to hang in with me. But the Word <clears throat> is the best preacher. Uh, knowing this, Paul says, that our old man was crucified with him, Jesus, and that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. I want you to understand, you are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in your body. When you are born again, your spirit man becomes new in Christ Jesus. All the old things pass away. You are now an heir and a joint heir of Christ. You are born again, that's the term that we like to use. And so the sin, S-I-N, it's not S-I-N-S, it's sin, is talking about your spirit man that's left over from your previous birth before you were born again. Your spirit man was passed down through Adam, who had the original sin. And God sent his son into this earth to deal with that so that your sin nature, your old man, can be born again into righteousness. And that happens at the new birth. And with, when you're born again, your spirit man becomes the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It becomes holy, sanctified. There are a number of things that are spelled out that take place at the moment of your new birth. And you can read Ephesians chapter 1, um, two, chapter 2, 3, and 4. Just read the book of Ephesians. But what I want to bring out to you is Paul is talking here about the old man. He's talking about your sin nature that was prior to your new birth. And he says the old man. He calls it the old man. Um that the body of sin in the old man might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. In other words, you're, not, you're no longer under the curse. You are no longer driven by your old man. Your old man, if you're not born again, he dictates to you what you're going to do. If somebody is not born again, you can't expect them to stand by the same rules and the same things that you do because they don't know how. It's literally impossible for them to please God. If they can try to do it through legalism, 
But that's not that's not the new birth. That's not how, how you're going to get righteous with God. And so he talks here about, now if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominance over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. That the life that he lives, he lives to God. In other words, when Christ went to the cross, he took our sin nature upon himself. And he doesn't ever have to go to the cross again. He doesn't die again. And we don't crucify him over and over again. He now is alive. And we who are in him are alive with him through the new birth. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin. But alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So... He's saying just what I said. When you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, you died to sin and you were raised unto righteousness. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its lust. So what's the problem here? We've got a new, new spirit. So what's he talking about? Sin reigning in our mortal body? Well, let me tell you what happens. Your spirit man becomes new in Christ Jesus. And your mind has to be renewed daily to the word of God. Over and over again, you have to reprogram your mind constantly to the word of God. But your flesh was not renewed. You're stuck with this flesh. And this flesh is tagging along with you. And oftentimes... Our flesh is dragging our spirit man where it doesn't want to go because we've never learned how to deal with our flesh. And that's what Paul is telling us here, that your sin problem is in your flesh. It is not in your spirit man. He says here, And do not permit your members, that's your body, your flesh, as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourself to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness. Do you notice here that he said you do that? You have to do that? God's not going to instantly come in and do that for you. This is something you have to do. It's a progression. It's called growing up spiritually. And some people take baby steps and some people take giant leaps. But it doesn't matter. It's still a progression that moves up and up and up. And we're going to do that all the way into the day that we either go to sleep in the Lord or that we're raptured from this earth. We are constantly going to be moving up, moving up, moving up daily, renewing our minds and developing our our flesh to be uh, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. You have been redeemed from the law. You are now under grace. He goes over to, chapter, uh, to verse 19, and he says in the last part of that, So now present your members or your body as slaves of righteousness for holiness. You have to do the presenting. How do I do that? Well, let's go on over and look and see what he has to say. Verse 22. But now, having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Sin works you, but righteousness rewards you. Sin will work you into the grave. You know, a lot of people think sin, that there's an old saying, you know, well, sin is fun for a moment, but the price that you pay will last for a lifetime. Sin will cut your life short. If you're a Christian and you're born again and you don't deal with your flesh, 
you don't put it under the uh, righteousness of God and you don't put the word first in your life and you don't take control over your members they will run crazy and you know what you're not going to look any different than an unbeliever you're not you're going to look just like the world and the wages of that is going to be death because whether you you have an early grave there are a lot of christians that have gone uh, to an early grave because they have never learned how to deal with their flesh they have never put their flesh under the control of their spirit man. Paul says here, he has, I love this part because it tells about poor Paul. He has the same problem you and I have. He says here um, in uh, chapter 7 in verse uh, 14, For we know that the law is spiritual, but I'm cardinal, sold under sin. For what am I doing? I, for what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, I do. Have you ever found yourself in that situation? I have. You know, you feel really good about yourself and you've got everything situated and you go out and then you find yourself doing something, saying something, getting yourself into deep uh, alligators because you have allowed your flesh to, to dive in to something you know that is contrary to how God wants you to act and live. And you know, let me tell you something. This not We're not just talking about drinking, smoking, and adultery. We're talking about some serious sins that have to do with gossip, pride, covetousness, you know, you that's, that's, that stinks in God's eyes. Uh, anything that is not of the, the law of love, you know, we have Christians that covet as bad or worse than some uh, unbelievers. Um, jealousy reigns in the, with Christians. Hatred, uh, unforgiveness, uh, holding people up for things that they've done to you in the past and refusing to forgive them. Um, not having an attitude of grace, uh, being very judgmental of others. You don't have that right to do that. And as far as God's concerned, that's a sin. And Paul found himself in this situation. He found himself wanting to please God and then finding that he was doing the opposite of what he actually wanted to do. He goes on to say, um, If then I do what I will not to do. Paul has a strange way of putting things, but we're going to kind of unwind it. Um, then I do what I will not to do. I agree with the law that is good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. Where is the sin dwelling? Not in his spirit, man. Paul is a believer. The sin is in his flesh. It's in his flesh, his uncreated flesh. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, okay, nothing good dwells. There is nothing good in your flesh. Now, long time ago, there were monks and people that read this, and they thought the way to deal with the flesh was by beating themselves. And they would daily just uh, whip their backs and do awful things to their flesh, thinking that that was crucifying the flesh and putting the flesh under. That is not dealing with your flesh at all. That is not dealing with the sin in your flesh. Your flesh is going to be there. The, de the way you deal with it is to put it under servitude of your spirit man. You have to choose who's going who's gonna to dominate your life. Is it going to be your flesh or is it going to be your spirit man? He said, for the good that I will to do, I do not do. For the evil I will not to do, that I practice. 
Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but the sin that dwells in me or in my flesh. I find then a law that evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. See, he's saying here, he delights in his spirit man to do the law of God, the law of freedom, the law of grace, the law of love. But he finds another law that's operating here. And he says, but I see another law in my members, in my flesh. And it's warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. So what he is telling you here is this. Let me just put it down where the rubber meets the road. Your mind is the doorway between your spirit man and your flesh. And however that door swings is the way you're going to operate. If your mind is renewed to the Word of God, then you've got two against one. You've got your mind that is lined up with your spirit man, and those two take your flesh into captivity and put it into control. That's how you control your flesh. That's how you control your thinking. That's how you control your actions. You know, Jesus said it's not in the thoughts of man that's the problem. It's just that when you think on it long enough, it becomes action. It's not what goes in. It's what comes out. And so the way you stop that is by changing your thinking, by putting your mind in alliance with the Word of God. Because if you cannot put your mind in the Word of God, you have nothing to deal with your, with your flesh with. And so you're going to be subject to the flesh. But if your mind is not renewed to the Word of God daily, if you don't choose every day, you know what, God? I choose today not because I'm under the law, but I choose today because I'm under grace. And I love you so much that I purpose that I'm going to walk in your word. I'm going to put my flesh down. It's not going to rule me. I refuse to allow it. If you do sin and you do miss the mark as a Christian, you go to 1 John 1, 9. And 1 John 1, 9 says that if you confess your sins, Jesus is, he will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And that's it. But you see, don't just use that as a cop-out to go out and say, well, okay, I can run to 1 John 1, 9 and go out and do whatever I want to do. No, that's not what that's for. God wants you to grow up. And I know people, honestly, they've sat in churches. I, I know children of pastors. I know ch people that have sat in ch church all their lives. And sometimes they have the hardest problem with walking a spiritual life. And so we need to get, we need to get our, our hearts and minds in line and realize that your enemy is your flesh and your solution is is renewing your mind to the Word of God. I'll tell you what I did when I began on my journey to walk in love. And I admit, there are days I'm not there. But I, I'm a lot further along than I used to be. And when I decided I was going to allow the fruit of the Spirit to grow in me, I had to first know what the fruit of the Spirit is. I'm going to challenge y'all. How many of you really know what the fruit of the Spirit is? Go to Galatians if you want to know what the fruit of the Spirit is. And, and study the love walk. Because once I wrote all that down, love is kind, love is patient, love is long-suffering, love is not offended, love prays for your enemies, and so on and so on. I would read that every night. It would be like taking in food from my body. And as I began to read that every single night, 
I began to find myself when I would get into a situation, then the love walk would take over. My spirit man would say, okay, Louise, what are you going to do about this? Are you going to walk in love? Are you going to walk in the flesh? And then I would choose. I would choose. See, that's the deal. You choose. I'm going to choose to walk in love. I'm going to crucify my flesh, and I'm going to go with God. So I pray that this means something to some of y'all today, <clears throat> that you have had a real struggle in this area. And this is the key, is knowing where your enemy is. Satan's not your enemy. Satan cannot make you do anything you don't want to do, okay? Now, you can open the door for demonic oppression in your life, okay? But we give, we give far too much credit to demons, your biggest problem is not Satan. Your biggest problem is your flesh. And that's where you need to start dealing with it. I love every one of you. I hope this helps you set some of you free. And join me again, and we'll pick up on another subject. Bye-bye.